you're going to love this historical novel featured this time around in Author's Corner. Oh, my gosh. Just even our conversation that we had off the air was so intriguing to me. Keith Corman joins us. And the name of the book is called Scourged Souls. And right there, it kind of gives you a little glimpse of maybe what it might be about. So, Keith, thanks so much for joining us. And give us the overview. What is at the heart and soul of this book? What is this book about? Well, thank you, Kate. I do. First of all, I'd like to just point out I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to uh, speak to you and the radio audience and uh, give a little background on the on the book. Uh, The book uh, takes place uh, during the uh, American Civil War, and uh, but it doesn't address the Civil War itself. Uh, The whole idea is uh, to um, uh, give a background of the day to day lives and what's leading up to people's involvement in it. Uh, it's not leading up to the war. The war is already in, in motion. Uh, but uh, characters in the book uh, live in both the uh, area that would become the area of combat uh, in the South and um, live uh, also in the non-combative areas, which would be in the, in the North, Indiana, Illinois, part of Ohio, and in the South pretty well takes place uh, particularly just north of Atlanta and Georgia, uh, at an area now known as Kennesaw. And so um, uh, that's that's the background. The, uh, the feeling uh, to re- get from the book is that, uh, as I always point out to, to people, uh, the world back then wasn't a faded, uh, you know, tin types and all that to look at. You didn't walk through a black and white world and faded world. But if the grass was green, the, the sky was blue, and things were just like today, except for styles and technology and some of your trains of thought. So um, that was what I'm trying to convey through the book, and ultimately the effects that war has on people and the communities and the individuals and the families as a result, whether you make it through the war or you don't make it through the war. And it is a big time of change and uh, what happens afterwards a little bit. So it's based on a true area. The area is given, uh, particularly Kennesaw Mountain, is uh, now a national battlefield park. And the particular skirmish that took place or the battle that took place is taken from the history of it and pretty well follows with what happened. It was very brutal. It was the northern side answer to the Pickett's Charge. It was just like Pickett's Charge. It was unnecessary and stupidic. So um, a lot of guys died from that. So. Mm. But anyway, that's that's the base of it. <laughs> what, what did you, it's so fascinating, Kennesaw Mountain, as you talk about, there's a lot that people don't know. What did you find out in some of your research for this historical novel that surprised you? Well, uh, one of the things was that uh, originally, uh, the war, ultimately, actually, the, the war was over economics, plain and simple, and uh, like most wars are. Um, but that, um, but in the South, and one of the characters in the South is a, is a gentleman by the name of Obadiah uh, Washington, and he, he's a former slave, but he's still in the South, and he has a business, and that existed. Um, he was able to, to work after... He'd done his chores for his owner, and because um, uh, the owner wanted to kind of s- slide out of slavery, that's a little bit of background with him, but it's not in a great detail. Uh, saw that it was wrong, but you just couldn't get up and say, "Okay, you're all gone," because you'd have retribution against the other slave owners. It was just a big issue, a big problem for them too. So, uh, to recoup some of the cost of of owning slaves. Some of them actually let them do things on the side to raise some money and to buy their freedom. And so when he received his freedom, he established a blacksmith shop in this little community in North Georgia. And then from there on, he took the money and saved and scrimped and was able to buy back out his family. And they all were together. Uh, That doesn't mean that uh, he was treated right by everybody because he was uh, an Af- black African. Uh, but uh, in general, people of average, of uh, what would we'd call now the, the working middle class, 
they they uh they got a they existed well together but not in camaraderie and um you know they had they needed each other but um it wasn't a close relationship on like we would today go into the next door and having a picnic or whatever so um that's one of the things to learn the other is how everything in the in in the south still went about like while everybody's fighting like at Shiloh and uh, um, up in the wilderness and in places like that, the rest of the world was still ticking. And uh, that's the other thing it plays on. So, um, but then war comes to the community and um, everything changes overnight. Yeah. What I want to tell everybody, we're speaking again to Keith Corman and the name of the book is scourged souls you can get it on amazon and it's interesting in listening to obadiah's tale and how the people were and as you talk about the working middle class and i love what you said in the beginning keith how there's so much we don't really understand about the civil war because there's been lots of books written about the civil war but what about the people and that's how your book really struck me that you really talk about the characters the people what it was like and that's right. exactly what you what you said what was it like for you developing those characters based on all of this research you've been doing well it was it was kind of a challenge but it was fun i i really enjoyed it because the better understand it you step back then you can't re you can't think of how we're thinking today about anything, and um, you have to become them, and uh, uh, or their neighbor, or whatever, or just a person passing through and seeing what's going on. And uh, there were a lot of things different, but yet people are the basically the same throughout history. And um, uh, I, I found it as a fun sense of a challenge. Um, Particularly in the book, there's letters to the to the ones in the field and letters home uh, for the ones uh, for the uh, uh, that came out of the for the union that came, went south, and uh, that was a challenge uh, of, to make each letter sound like that person and not like all all of them sounding the same. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, it uh, and and being able to address without pointing without being blatant about it, the personalities in these people. Uh, one of them is a, um, uh, an attorney uh, from uh, Illinois and um, very successful in East town. Now all these towns outside of the battle area are fictional, but in, in Cincinnati and places like that. But um, uh, he had aspirations. His big plan was he was, uh, wanted to become governor of Illinois and very flamboyant, um, energetic guy and his uh, future son-in-law, his daughter's dating this law clerk, uh, becomes his adjutant. He raises a, uh, troops in, in their town and he's going to go into, into glory, you know, and become a hero. And he's a Lincoln Republican and mm -hmm. my gosh, we're going to take this and I'm going to be the best governor and yada, yada. Well, you'll find out whether that works out or not in the in the in the book. But uh, you know, uh, then there's other people like little Augie Gravy, August Gravy, who's a farm boy from Indiana, German American farmer, and he joins the military because he feels it's the right thing to do against the uh, the wishes of his parents, who were pacifists from that uh, came here from Germany to get away from inscriptment and things. So. There's conflicts even in home and heart in these type of circumstances. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can feel that in your, in your book, definitely. What do you hope people take away from reading it? Well, I hope they take away that history isn't like Hollywood uh, versions of it. Um, we tend to overdo and, or oversimplify some things uh, when we try to, to make them into a big story. Uh, I want them to understand that this isn't set up to say that these people existed as individuals, but they did exist in the spirit of things, in the spirit of life. And um, uh, they're no different than we are and how we're affected. And um, it's kind of odd because in a sense, it's kind of almost like it's an anti-war book because uh, it gets very graphic with the battle. and. Hope, I tried to make it as disgusting and gory as I could, 
so people understand, uh, you know, it's permanent when you get killed. It's not like all of a sudden you're in, in, in a different show, mm-hmm. in a different movie, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's nothing fun to, to be around. I've never served, but my son-in-law has and the others that have been in battle. And uh, most of the time they never talk about the battles and bad, bad memories. So um, uh, I, I want to get that across to people and that history, throughout history, both sides, the average person is just the average person. You know, they do what they have to do or they're forced to do. But uh, when it all comes down to push and shove, they're, they're, there's not much difference between them. Philosophy, yeah. philosophy tends to do that sometimes to them, but uh, overall, as, as as individuals, they're they're not much different. Yep, I love the way you summed that up. People are people. Scourge souls. Keith Corman, pick it up on Amazon.com. Thank you for sharing your book and your story. Oh, no problem. My pleasure, and had a good time with it. <laughs>